gang of maniacs who've got, everybody's got some brand of insanity of their own. Okay, so Tex has gone there because it's familiar. Uh, that, in part, and partly... Why? How come it was familiar? Huh? How come it was familiar to him? He's been there? Oh, yeah, he went there with, uh, with uh, uh, Dean Morehouse. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's an Indian princess uh, that was uh, in the reservation that had a, a motorcycle uh, uh, group. Uh, it, motorcycle groups are lapped over with other motorcycle groups. Yeah. One chrome helmet holds a motorcycle group of 50 that is chartered for the road. Yeah. That uh, if they're not chartered, you don't have the right colors, then the motorcycle group that's chartered for 250 uh, that don't have the helmet, but they got the daggers, will run the yeah. other ones off the road. In other right. words, you've got uh, different motorcycle gangs doing different things on different perspectives. Okay, know? so Tex has gone there because it's familiar. He's been there before. Did you ever go there? Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, what, what took you there? Uh, the homosexual that lived in the back. Who was that? Garrison? Uh, uh, a guy that used to deal grass and, and uh, some other things. Mm -hmm. Pornography. Uh, Polanski was in... Uh, see, here's the thing, man. I don't want to start pulling people's covers, uh, but all them people that you thought were so wonderful and, and nice, wonderful, you know, they wasn't as wonderful as you thought their dogs might have been on the show for the night off, you dig? In other words, there's all kinds of things happening in the, in the darkness of what was going on that, uh, you know, like how does someone from Poland get to Hollywood and go all the way over the top and, you know, have everything it is there, like a, a, a valley of the dolls, where does one camera click in and what film are we sending to Hong Kong for the other? In other words, like, that's what I was fixing to tell you about Doris Day, the reason that came down. When the oriental, the blonde head, blue-eyed oriental came to me, and I don't know whether you've ever experienced any music on the level that I play music on. But I play music on a level that you've never seen before. I don't play music on the, on the level of little girl music. I play music on the level of just as flat ass as you can sing Christ dying on the cross level. Okay. And it was scary. It's really, really far out. It's, a lot of people try to copy what they can do with it, you dig? But it's like, it's got to come from the soul, you know? Yeah. So when it came in and the music lifted up, there are certain levels of the mind. Have you ever experienced levels of the mind where other people couldn't exist? They, they go crazy. They're, the mind, the pattern of the mind. <laughs> like your mind is patterned by um, tom, tom, tom. And someone comes, set, pop, ten, I'm not, I'm not. You see what that's doing to your mind now? Take it up. And you get there, and then this guy starts going crazy. Mm -hmm. Then he gets on his knees and says, Oh Lord, oh God. I say, Man, he must be talking to the bass man because, uh, you know, the drummer just got uh, left. You know, he scared the drummer off, you dig? Two other people fell down. Somebody went through a fit. Somebody wanted to pray. Well, you see what I'm saying? In other words, when you open up the soul, you open up the hole oh, yeah, of sure. that soul, okay. you dig? Okay, this is great, but how we still have got a pile of bodies in this house. Yeah. So, how did they get dead? I mean, they, have, they, they haven't. Just died. Okay. Yeah. The guy comes up to me and says, uh, you're God. You must be him. I said, get away from me with that. Who says that? He said, who said that? That the Oriental. Who's he that? Said, Who's, this that? Is Who's my the Oriental? Music. What's the number's name? This is my music, you little bitch. Yeah. I'll take your heart out of your chest, tramp. Mm -hmm. Right on when I come over to you. Okay. You dig? He said, what are you doing out here playing? Jed Melcher sent this clown over to me. To Melcher, this is the man. River Sun and Moon is the man to Terry Milcher. He's not the man to me. Put him in the main line of San Quentin. He's not the man guy. Put him over on death row for two or three times around. And he's not the same guy who was in some clown outfit yeah. playing some fucking game with some circus. You dig what I'm saying? In other words, I mean, none of those realities are loud men on this road. You okay, dig? So and don't ever touch the music that yeah. you don't even know exists. So it's you know? so. It's got something to do with Terry Melcher. Yeah, no, he that. came, he wanted to fight. I told mm -hmm. him, I don't want to fight. I said, Bruce, you want to fight this guy? You fight him. I'm not going to fight him. I ducked him and ran behind the barn. I don't want to fight him. Mm -hmm. So Bruce was getting ready to fight him. Somebody else was fighting him. He was fighting everybody else. You dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then he come to fight me, and I got a, one of the things that then I put over his head, mm -hmm. and I lay him down. Mm -hmm. thing. I said, you, you want me to cut your head off? I'll take your life now. Mm -hmm. You know, and I 
I've got him right up to the point of taking his life right now. And I said, look, man, I don't want to go to death row for you. I don't want to go to San Quentin for you. He said, stay out of the music or I'll cut my hell. I said, go back to your wife and get under her bed and beg her for forgiveness. Okay. Because if I take your head, it won't be where anybody will know it. I said, now get. And I ran him off. But when I ran him off, everybody else is still in the war. The war hasn't ended. The Korean War is still going on. MacArthur, MAC, yeah. is still standing on the 38th parallel. Mm -hmm. To you guys, the war's over. Mm -hmm. The war's not over where I live. Sure, okay. But we've still got these dead people. Huh? We've still got these dead people in well, this house. Well, the world full of, uh, yeah. of people okay. that are dead. But Everyone always points at Charlie Manson and says... That's because the DA sold him in the head. Okay. He, he sold him in the health of Skelter, so Sylvester okay. Salone. So you didn't send them there? I didn't send them anywhere. Okay, you didn't send them there? I'm not the director. I don't send people places. You wasn't for Helder Skelter? You weren't going to start a big revolution? No. 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 Okay. Hey, 25 years in there, no intelligence amongst you at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, because that doesn't make any sense to anybody, you know. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying now is, isn't making a lot of sense to a lot of people. Well, that's what I'm saying. Sure. It, you know, it's, you, can't, you can't just explain it just uh, in one, two, three. It, it's not that simple. There's a, there's, a, there's a running episode for two or three years of fights and, and sex orgies. And you, you know, when you open up a sex orgy, what happens? When you get four or five bulls in the same ring, you know what happens? All these bulls start banging on each other. I, I can't get my stuff up. You made me lose my stuff. Uh, I want to fight you. And you got all kinds of fights. You got all kinds of... You know, in the words in there, outlaw, man, that's what outlaws do, man. Outlaws are always fighting and killing each other, man. There ain't no new thing to where I live, man. So you're saying the people in the houses, in the house where the only thing that made that, wait a minute, The only thing that made that any different than anything else is that Broad happened to be an actor. Okay. If she hadn't been an actor, no one would have even heard about it, man, and probably no one would have got busted. So you're saying that there are people in the house where... No, I'm saying that if you go to the L.A. morgue and you watch how many bodies they bring in there at night, they bring two or three hundred bodies every night. Mm -hmm. In other words, you know, that's, uh, that's life, man. People are killed all the time. And they say, well, don't you feel any remorse? That's a mm -hmm. very different people doing a lot of different things. But directly, directing someone to go do something like, you know, that's, you know... But they didn't do it for you, and you say... There you go for me, man. No. Oh, no, I'm, I'm going to accept what you're saying now. I'm going to say, I'm going to accept for a moment that they didn't do it for you, okay? So I'm asking myself, why did they do it? They do it because they had to do it. They do it because they had to do it. They had a beef with those they, people. Yeah, no, no. They, life pushes it to do that. Life pushes it to do that, and it's going to be done. It's got nothing to do with personality. It's not me. Of course it has. Of course it's going to do it. Of course it's going to do it. Where am I, God? Because if you say that they didn't do it, because they had a beef with those people, you're almost joining up with Vince Bugliosi because you're, you're saying it was done at random. Uh, let's look at it from his point of view. All he had was a bunch of murders and a bunch of people, and he wanted to win, and he took advantage of it completely. Let's face it, everybody in this world is out for number one, and everybody uses everybody else any way they can, and don't come up like he was doing it for the better of humanity because he don't give a shit about humanity no more than anybody else does. Mm -hmm. When it comes down to it, everybody's digging their own hole for themselves to lay in, man. But if it had anything to do, if it had anything to do with it being Terry Melcher's house for me. It was, yeah, it was Terry Melcher's house because uh, uh, the people were at that ranch was mad at Terry Melcher because mm -hmm. he didn't do what he said, number one. Number two, he sent somebody over there to fight. Mm -hmm. He caused some trouble. He almost got some other people killed. Mm -hmm. Some people put their life on the line because of Terry Melcher. Mm -hmm. Terry Melcher didn't even know about it. He wasn't even, uh, no one ever told him about it. And this is the first time I've ever even brought it up. See, in other words, a lot of that poison that goes under the bridge, I just forget it and let it go on down the road because it doesn't matter. To dig it up only brings up more negative, more bad mm -hmm. thought. It, it, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't, it doesn't prove anything. It doesn't, uh, the time is done. Mm -hmm. The crimes are over. It's already gone through the things. It went through the changes, you know. Mm -hmm. Now they're coming back up and digging it back up to go through it all over again. Take it to court. Well. Give me my rights. Okay. Give me the rights you didn't give me. So. Or give me the throne of England. Yeah. <laughs> some people, well, there some, you go. Pe some people say okay. you should get a new trial. Okay. If they okay. don't give me a new trial, let's look at it from that point. Right. If you don't give me a new trial, mm -hmm. I ain't got no rights at all, man. Mm -hmm. I'm kept in handcuffs for 23 years. These people do anything they want. They take my mail anytime time they want. Mm -hmm. They do anything they want to do to me. So where does that put you? Mm -hmm. but English speaking people, where does that put you? 